Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for my client Garrett's vlog. And you guys will see this week, you guys will notice everyone says, hey, if his maxes are these lifts, then how is he an intermediate? Which we've covered in the past, but I think what you guys will see at the end of today's video, you'll understand that these are training maxes. They're not true maxes. Because he came in and hit 35 pounds heavier on his deadlift after doing a training max after doing a training max he came in and hit a 35 pound heavier because he wanted a good PR going into new year okay so almost 10 percent higher so for his bench we hit 240 in this phase for his training max and this is what we program off of so when I assign these training maxes, I look at their lifts. We look at those training maxes and see if they're light enough and move fast enough that we continue to count them as a training max, right? And that's what we do on this system. So in keeping with what we've been doing, you guys will notice there's not a lot of variation so far in his supplemental work. What do, what do we do on upper days? We do our benching or our pressing right with boring but big so five by tens and then right now we do dumbbell presses dumbbell rows or weighted pull-ups well, actually body weight pull-ups we, we do pretty high reps for him so this is this is pretty much what he does and then we've started adding more band face pulls so he also does some band face pulls on off days because he needs more upper back now a lot of people say well jason where's the arm work uh, he doesn't need that much arm work right now right now we need to be focusing on his his legs All right he needs more legs he needs more pec these are the things that he needs to get his lifts up right? and so this is what we work on it's not to say we won't change that in the near future and that's what we keep in mind with this training we change these things right so at the moment I feel like his pec development has come along really well we've done tons and tons and tons of dumbbell benching i might change that up a little bit and put a little more delt work a little more tricep work coming up All right we might do that we might add some extra bicep work in All right we might add some bicep work in particularly if i take him to all rows and take the pull-ups out so this stuff is subject to change uh squats he got a 285 squat 285 squat and as you guys saw and noticed it was a training max it's not a true max and then we program off of that and then we do 5 by 10 based upon programming around that and this stuff changes so some people see some of my guys like this who do like a, a this sort of template and don't realize that I have guys who run other templates okay I have guys who do my more advanced guys some of them run things like a fives progression they do fives, a lot of fives on the, the accessory or the assistance work, okay? And then accessories, they're doing tens and high reps. So even on a system like this, it's not constant. I use the different templates that are there and I work them around what my individual lifter needs. Now in his case, we're doing those goblet squats because he needs the quad work. Quite frankly, he needs it. He's tall, he is like 6'3", six, 6'4", lanky and he struggles to get the quad and adductor development that we want from doing back squats and he's very prone to tendonitis on it so for even for a little while before the goblet squats we were actually doing uh, isolateral leg work so we were doing things like uh, dumbbell split squats right we were doing dumbbell split squats which have helped bring his squat up but you know the goblet squats work really well and again people will look at something like the goblet squats and they'll go well, those are so light even for what he squats like how does that possibly work because if you've done a heavy ramped up to a peak set and then you've done five by ten on back squats your quads adductors glutes and everything are very fatigued already we are then coming in and essentially doing bodybuilder type pump work okay and it doesn't need to be to failure and this is something that, that I'm having to try to stress to a lot of my clients and I stress to a lot of you out there. You guys who are out of shape and go, I don't have any work capacity. Well, quit training to failure. Okay. Start using 
weights for your work sets at your five by tens that you can actually complete all five sets of 10 with without grinding the last set so that you still have a rep in reserve to two reps in reserve on the fifth set if you guys would do that your work capacity would go up and you will grow because keeping in mind the research doesn't even show that failure causes more muscle growth it just beats you up we need challenging quality sets and with a lot of this volume work we're trying to get metabolic fatigue right we are literally doing it as pump type bodybuilding work but we're doing it off the back end of heavy work first because every single workout starts with a weight that's at 85 percent or higher of a training max right no matter what setup we do that is how we work it Okay, so we always start heavy on a big basic barbell movement every single workout we program progression on those then we come in and do rpe type pump work with all the other stuff uh his overhead press by the way he got 150. so again pr deadlifts he was supposed to do 370 he pulled it and then watch him right here he ends up pulling 405. All right he pulls 405 holds it at the top he was good all right no problem so even that 405 at this point probably wasn't 100 percent of his max he wanted to grab it because he knew based upon his rep work he was strong enough he did it without consulting me i sometimes get mad one of my other lifters got hurt doing the same thing this week who was less advanced than him all right it was a sub 400 pound lift right who decided after their training max to do the same thing he did they got a minor injury all right, they got a minor injury fortunately he didn't the difference between being a little more experienced and then again off the back end of this we do deadlifts for five by ten and then we do good mornings hammering the posterior chain and the entire thoracic lumbar sling right but because between deadlifts with that much volume and good mornings right the entire posterior side of his body's been worked everything from his hamstrings to his traps so we don't really need anything else on this day but this was a very successful week we got some really good training maxes in he came in and hit a lifetime pr a milestone lift on his deadlift all right now i will note here i don't like these good mornings I'm seeing too much extension to the back. Sorry, too much flexion to the back, not extension. All right, again, he's struggling with these. We may need to reduce the weight again and go back to a little tighter on the uh, reps and reserve. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.